scripture. The first lesson from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 12, a call to us to rejoice and to give thanks to God for, for his blessings. Secondly, the second lesson from Romans 7, verses 14 to, 7, uh, 7, 14 to 25, speaks of the ongoing struggle that each and every Christian has. That text will be the subject of our meditation this morning. And finally, the gospel reading for today uh, speaks about the, the, the grace and the love of God and the call to come to him when we are struggling and having heartache as he gives us the promise, come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. The first lesson from Zechariah chapter 9 verses 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, mounted, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of, of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual but I am of the flesh and sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and, and making me captive to the law of sin that, that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel recorded in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. I invite you to rise for the reading of the Gospel. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and, and have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you now to join as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, uh, the words printed in the back of the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who 
was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The, the text for our meditation as we continue this series of sermons based on the second lesson is, is from Romans chapter 7. And I'm going to read that portion to you again. You can follow along in the, uh, on the back of your bulletin. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So it, now it is no longer I who do it, but, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want to do is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of our Lord. 
Well, it was about, uh, it was two weeks ago today that in our sermonic study of this Romans chapter 6, that we talked about baptism and the tremendous blessings that God has given to us in baptism. We were reminded that in our baptism, we in a sacramental way were, were, were joined, we were tied to Jesus. We were in that way crucified with him. We were buried with him. And, and then as he rose from the dead, so we rose to live in newness of life as we await that great and wonderful day of resurrection at the end of time. It was in our baptism we looked at that week that St. Paul reminded us that we died to sin that we were freed at that time from its enslaving power. Now that doesn't mean that sin disappeared or that we stopped sinning at that particular point, not at all. Those enemies, the world, the devil, and our sinful flesh continue to be very much alive. The difference is that now we are able to fight against them. That was impossible for us to do when we were, were enslaved to sin and to death. But, but now we can discipline the old sinful nature. Now we can take a stand against the world. Now we can resist the evil one. St. Paul put it this way to baptize believers. He said, now, now don't let sin reign in your mortal body. He said, now, now, now don't offer yourselves as instruments to wickedness, but offer yourselves now to God. Paul was instructing baptized believers to take up the battle, to, as we sang, fight the good fight of faith, to become Christian soldiers who move onward, onward Christian soldiers marching to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Well, the question that comes to us this morning is, how are you doing in your battle of faith? What's happening in your good fight of faith? In the scripture lesson for this week, St. Paul gives us in, in, an insight into his personal fight of faith. It's his personal testimony that he shares with us here in this lesson. It's his confession. I'm going to paraphrase, but this is what I hear him saying. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand my own actions. I don't do what I want to do. In fact, I'm doing the very things that I hate. I delight in the God's law in my mind, but I see... But I want to do what is pleasing to God, but more often than not, the evil that I don't want to do is exactly what I keep on doing. That's not me. That's not the new me that the Spirit of God is working in me. That's the old sinful nature doing it. No, it's not that St. Paul is giving an excuse here. He's not saying it's not my fault. The devil made me do it. Uh, kind of like Foot Wilson, that old comedian, used to say. It's not my fault. The old sinful nature made me do it. It's his sinful nature. It's his problem. But what he is describing is the personal battle that takes place within every believer between the new nature that the Spirit of God is working in their life and the old nature that wants to fight it and wants to fight and keep us serving self. And that battle is severe. And oftentimes we fail in that battle. Wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this battle, from this, from this body of death? St. Paul states his confession. I believe that his confession is the confession that every single Christian needs to make. You see, every Christian, I believe, delights in God's will. Every Christian seeks to do what God wants them to do. But more often than not, we do the exact opposite of what we know in our mind. No, I can't talk about you, but I can talk about myself. 
And so this morning, you're going to be hearing my confession like St. Paul gave his. I want to do what God's will says. He gives me guidance in his word, and, and I've come to know that, that word. In fact, I know it more and better now than I ever have before. I know, for instance, that, that God wants me to love my wife. He wants me to love her as Christ loved the church and, and gave himself up for her. But I need to admit that that's not always what I do. There are times, there are lots of times when I get frustrated or, or I feel pressured or, or I just am miserable, got up on the wrong side of the bed. And she soon finds out about that. And she bears the brunt of my old sinful nature acting out. And that's not what God wants. That's sin. God forgive me, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this body of death? I want to do what is pleasing. And, and God tells me his word as a parent that, that I need to reflect the love and God of the Father in heaven to my children. He says to me, fathers, don't exasperate your kids. But I bet you if you talk to my kids, they'll point out all kinds of times in my past when I exasperated them. When my treatment of them was conditioned on my feelings rather than on their action. And that's sin. God, forgive me for that wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this, from this body of death? I want to do what is God pleasing. And God tells me in his word that as a pastor... I'm to carry out my responsibilities faithful. But there are days when I hear myself saying things like this. Leading a church is like herding cats. Now some people laugh at that when I've said that. But it's sad. It's terribly sad. Because, because it's my old nature speaking. And what my old nature is speak, saying is, is something like this. People aren't doing what I want them to be doing. They're not doing it the right way. That's always my way. And in all of these things, when I say things like that, I'm forgetting that this church isn't my church, but it's Christ's church. And he calls me to be part of a family. And, and my will isn't what directs it. He's the one who gives the direction, not me. And when I act like that, that's sin. God, forgive me for that wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Throughout my life, I try to do what God is God pleasing. And he tells me in his word that I'm called to feed the hungry and to visit the sick, to, to care for the homeless, to, to care for the orphans and the widows. And, and in doing that, I am actually doing it for Jesus. I'm, I'm serving him. But let me tell you, that my old sinful nature can think of a billion reasons why I shouldn't do that. And most of them center on this reality. What's it going to cost me? And more often than not, that's what I do and not what God wants me to do. And my friends, that's sin. And I need to confess that. God, forgive me for my selfishness. Wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Well, that's the battle that I experience in life. It's a spiritual battle that I believe all of us are engaged in as God's children. A battle between that new nature that the Spirit of God is working in our life and that old nature that seeks to serve self. And if you find yourself saying something like, well, really this is no big deal, or maybe it's really not all that bad, or, or I'm quite comfortable with the way in which I'm living right now, then I need to warn you. I need to warn you that to soften what God says in his word is the right thing to do. As though sin were really not all that bad. Puts us in danger of losing our faith. No, like St. Paul, children of God 
will experience that battle in their life. And that battle becomes more and more intense as they grow and understand what is the will of God for their life and, and how he wants them to live. That's what was happening to St. Paul. He was so attuned to God's will that he recognized evil and sin when it became a reality in his life. He knew God's call, but he also knew himself. The good that I would, I do not. And the evil that I do not want to do, that I do. That's what led him to say, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Well, it's really not a question that Paul was asking. I say it's not a question because he knew the answer. In stating that question, he was really expressing his frustration. He knew what that answer was because he says it right away. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The answer comes in that one, that one who said to us in the gospel reading for today, come to me, all you who are laden, uh, er, uh, who, are lab who labor and are heavy laden. He's talking about the battle of faith that we have in this world. Come to me and I will give you rest. The fact that we battle and struggle that we experience this spiritual warfare is not a sign that we are not Christians. It's a sign that we are Christians. The fact that we struggle, that we experience a battle is, is that sign that we are the sons and daughters of God. It's, it strips us of any illusion that we may have that we can somehow meet God's expectations and save ourselves. And it, it always drives us back to him in confession. To that one who in love gave himself for us. And, and so as again he did this morning, forgives us and delivers us and gives us that eternal rest. And so even while we struggle and feel wretched, I want you to know this. In Jesus Christ, you've been delivered. And on the last day, you're going to experience that delivery in totality. When this mortal body with its sinful nature is raised to be an immortal body. And when this sinful body is raised to be a spiritual body, exactly like that of our Savior himself. But as we live with that kind of faith, in the meantime in this world, we're always going to be struggling. We're always going to be fighting that good fight of faith. And so my friends, onward Christian soldiers. We're off to war. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds centered in Christ Jesus. Amen.